Now this thing is exceptionally heavy, so if you have some help, that's going to benefit you. Uh, we're going to open this manual up. Now this will cover the Kohler Pro. This is the 14 horse uh, motor, by the way. We do have the operator's manual. And this is showing us the oil types that we can use according to temperature outside for the engine itself. And then we get a catalog, it looks like, showing some of Woodland Mills other products. This guy right here is where we need to start. So, let's put this thing together. That's a list of the tools that they have in the manual that you're going to need to put this salt mill together. Heavy duty hardware. Quarter inch angle. parts in this box guys. We finally have the crate empty. So I've got everything laid out now and rolling along with our bunks we get the three that will have the log stops in the center and then the two end ones are just square up steel. The hardware was easy to separate. Inside the box of nuts here we had the 35 millimeter bolts. It's got a longer shank right here that will bolt down our seam and that allows us to get through both of the thicker pieces of steel here. So there was 16 of these 35 millimeter bolts in the box of nuts here. And then we will use the 25 millimeter bolts, shorter ones, and it's all the way threaded to the top. So if you're separating them, that should help you. In any place that we just have to go through the single bunk into the rail, we can use the shorter bolts. So I'm gonna get everything bolted together. I'm gonna bolt it together loosely, that way I can move it to square it up. And then again, I will be moving it out of this location, so I just simply laid down some 2x4s across the floor to give me room to work, get my hands underneath here for wrenches, and uh, put this thing together. And again, now this goes down on the bottom of the frame and is going to hold this joint together for our track a little better. This does take the longer bolts. You'll use 16 of them here. So we get eight bolts on this side of the longer style and eight bolts on that side. And if you're doing a permanent install, they do suggest a minimum of four to six inches of clearance 
between the bottom of your rail and the soil. And then the shorter bolts, the 25 millimeter length, we'll hold down these products. Now after I get this all assembled and get the power head installed on the rails, I get to take this all apart and do it again. That's alright. I'll know how it goes together. Okay, I got all the bolts in. Now our next step is to make sure that we are 30 and a half inches from the outside rail. all the way down the length of it and everything is just loosely tight so I can move this if I need to check my center here as well this is going to aid us in getting this thing squared up now we're going to make sure our bunks are square to the rail and we're going to measure from this corner diagonally all the way up to the front corner. And this is where it would be helpful to have a second person to be able to hold the tape or just use a pair of vice grips or scissor clamps to hold your tape measure for you. But we want to make sure that when we're measuring that we go to the exact same spot on our upper corner as where we are here on the base. Because this really is the most important thing you're going to be able to do with your rail is to get this guy square before you get everything tightened up. And we'll repeat the same process on this side. And the numbers have to be identical. Now that I have my rail square, I'm going to start tightening from the center, working out. And I'll do that in the next. So I'm going to tighten here and go down to that corner and tighten. Then I'll come up to this corner and tighten and over to this corner and tighten. And then when I'm completely bolted up, I'm going to double check and make sure I'm square. Again, getting this rail to where it is square and smooth is going to be key to your saw operation. So now we're completely square. We're going to move on to the adjustable feet. So we're going to need this bag of hardware and our feet here. So we'll bolt through the bottom and we're going to run one jam nut all the way down. These are, looks to me, about like five, five and a half inches long, so it takes a little bit to get these threaded all the way down through there. There we go. And then you would snug that up. And our second one, we're just going to run down a little ways. We'll make sure that we can get into the frame. Now if you're hard mounting to a timber that's down on the ground, you may not even need your feet on the bottom of that. But you can tighten these all the way up to the base and get them up and out of the way. But one thing I like about these is there's holes in here that you can actually mount that down to your timber. So it's going to help when you start rolling heavy logs onto the frame here to help hold everything in place. And then when we're completed, this will come up through the bottom, and this one will actually tighten down to where we need to be, and then we'll run our jam nut back up. And that's what makes this adjustable. You can run this up, thread the top down or the bottom up to whatever height you need, and then make sure everything is level for you. Should look like that. Got all 12 feet installed now. 
And these leveling feet guys would be great for any application, concrete like you see here, or down to timbers. Heavy duty. Now our seam for our rail has two feet on each side of the bunk. And then I put my four leveling feet inside these two front bunks. And on the rear of the end of the rail. Alright, our next step. We're going to put on our carriage stops. And they're going to bolt right here on all four corners of our rail. And this simply stops the carriage unit from rolling off the ends of the track for you. And this is going to take the 25 millimeter shorter bolts Now on these, I don't want anything protruding past the edge of the rail, so I'm going to stick the long side of the bolt in. We're going to end up just like that. These you can actually go ahead and tighten up if you choose to at this point. All right, next is our log clamp. You're going to have one side of this that's welded. It will go on the opposite side of where our log stops are. And the bracket's just going to slide down. And this will go facing me towards the log stops. Then our remaining bracket's going to go on this other side here. We're going to bolt it in place. And this also uses the 25 millimeter bolts. And this is another piece that you can go ahead and bolt up tight because it's not going to be moving around on you. That is well made also. It's going to be heavy enough to hold any log you're going to roll up there I would say. Now for our log stops, we have our T-handles that have to go into the square here. sent along six of the hex nuts that does not have the Teflon inside of them and we're going to thread these onto our 25 millimeter length bolt and this is going to act as a jam nut for holding our log stops in place. These are used to square up log stops because this is a smaller diameter than the square tubing they have here. So when you're threading this in, get your stops set to where you end up with a square 90 degree angle here, top and bottom, and then that way as you're moving those in and out, we can now adjust this guy. And I don't have my center rail tightened up because I have to move this later. But as you're moving this for different size logs and things, this would be a critical step in getting the square material at the end of your cut. 
and you can very well get this thing out of square by at least a sixteenth of an inch or so and that go a long way on squaring up a can. So after you get your log stop in here and get it squared up, run your stops down and you can tighten them up and then you can probably leave it because we can just take this guy loose and slide this out. All right. And then you have to decide too uh, if you want the long ones or the short ones in, depending on what your log length is. Now the short ones have a square stop welded on the top of them to keep it from sliding down through your bunk. So that guy right there will prevent that from sliding, sliding all the way to the bottom. And this is made for shorter material. Once you have your log can't cut and you start getting down to where you're just slabbing material off, the shorter side is probably going to be easier to manage than the long ones. So that pretty much completes our railing system, guys. The hardware count was dead on. I ended up with one spare bolt in here and everything's in there and in place. And normally you have to separate all your uh, hardware to start assembling something like this and I will say they had everything that I needed to put this rail together in three boxes as far as the nuts and bolts and the count was dead on and uh, that made that easy. So once you pull the last two boxes out of the crate that's supporting the power unit, that's where you're going to start for this installation and everything was bundled together and ready to go and made it easy. Uh, definitely get everything square for your rails. This is probably the most important aspect as far as a good finished material. So if you're square and level, your saw is going to run better for you and uh, that's ultimately what you're after. You want good material at the end of this. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you on the next one, and we'll try to get this thing installed.